welcome back to the channel. Hayden Corey here with another one for you guys. This week, we are going to be going over the install of these BC Racing coilovers. So I did record it whenever I had done my install orig originally, but for some reason our files corrupted and we lost that footage. So I'm going to be going back through and actually removing the BC Racing coilovers to reinstall them. I'm just gonna pull them out, adjust them a little bit. I know you can do it on the car, but just for you guys' sake and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you guys how you would get it out of the car, what all bolts you need to get, and just really the process. It shouldn't take long. The rears are much faster than the fronts, but the front shouldn't take long either. We're gonna go in and hop right into that, but before we do, let me also say thank you to all of our new subscribers, guys. We are, this morning, as of last time I checked, we are four away from 500. That's crazy, guys. You're absolutely killing it. I appreciate your support, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, guys, so first off, we are going to go ahead and get this wheel off. Like I said, this will be the only thing I will be using a power tool for, will be this part. So, go ahead and pop these lugs off. All right, there's the wheel. Now, we are looking in here. As you guys can see, we do have our BC Racing coilover up there. What we are going to start with will be these in links. There's one down here and one up here. So we got that part off. Now we need to get up here to our sway bar in links. So this is going to be a 19 as for the aftermarket one. I believe it's an 18 for the OEM. So we got that front in link or top in link loose now. Going ahead and remove this bolt entirely. There's one in link bolt down. Now we got this one right here. Let's see if we can get it all in there. There it is. So, ooh, there it is. Uh, got her loose. So, like I said, guys, you guys can do this with hand tools. You do not need power tools for this. There we go. I think that's close. Er, yep. Finger tight. <laughs> Caught it back here. It's all good. Oh, come on now. There it goes. So, in link is ready to come out. The in link can be a pain sometimes as far as actually getting it out. My OEM one, I uh, was able to get it out on the passenger side on this side. I'm pretty sure I ended up cutting it off because you can't reuse the OEM in links anyways. But we got that loosened up. We're going to go ahead and loosen up our spreader bolt right here. And uh, hopefully that gives us a little bit extra room. So for this one, you will need one of these bad boys. I, think, I forget which size it is. It might be this one, uh, 16 maybe. Nope, that's a little bit big. So this one right here, then a 14. I don't even know what these are. I think they're called like triple squares. You need a set of these um, M14s is the size that you'll need. It's a quarter inch driver off of it. So I don't have a quarter inch over here. Let me grab an extension real fast. We have this now. We're going to use this wrench. This is actually a Newton meter wrench, but it'll be fine. Yep, that's an 18. All right, guys, so go ahead and slap that on there. Got it on loosen, and now, all right, oops. Gotta work this spreader bolt out. So guys, like I said, you really do not have to have power tools for this job whatsoever. Um, all I have is a little Ryobi impact drill, and it gets the job done. So keep that in mind whenever you're like, oh, I can't do this. You guys can. It's not that tough. The bolts that you need to remove will be your in link right here, your in link bolt right here, okay? And then your spreader bolt right through here, okay? Once you have that done, you will need your spreader tool, this right here. I'm sure you guys probably have all heard of this or seen this before. It's like five bucks on Amazon. Just pick yourself one up, type in strut spreader tool and it will pull up. So this will actually go right into the back of this. And there's a slot back here where it sits in. So you guys can see it's sitting in this spot, slot where your spreader bolt goes through. And all it does, you sit in there and you turn it to the side with a ratchet and it will automatically widen this up and it'll fall right off. So it'll only drop to a certain point because 
of all of this suspension down here, guys, okay? That being said, what you can do is you will grab a two by four, you'll set it straight in here like this, and you will ram it into the bottom hat of where the spring sets on the stock strut, and you will compress the string, all right? Or spring, and whenever you do that, you compress it to a point to where you can tap this knuckle and it'll drop off. It'll, you'll give it this enough height to where this can drop to its max low and be completely separated from here. At that point, you can pull out these three bolts up here and go on ahead and pull out the entire strut, slip in the other one, and there you go. Guys, I'm not gonna go any farther than this just because I am having troubles with these end links and I don't wanna damage them because I don't have replacements for these, but with your OEM ones, if you can't get them out and you're having an issue like this, you can literally cut them in half. You cannot reuse your OEM end links with your coilovers, so don't try and save them if you don't have to or if it's giving you trouble, just get rid of them. It won't be an issue. That's it for the front. It is literally one, two, three, four, five, six bolts if you do not drop the axles. If you decide to drop the axles, I don't know if you guys can see up in there, but you have one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on each axle. So in total you'd have to take off an extra 12 bolts, double the amount of bolts per side. So if I were you, I'd definitely go for the two by four method. I know I slipped in a little time lapse of it into uh, the last video where we talked about these coilovers. So that way you guys could kind of get an idea, but I wanted to show you a little bit more in depth for those people that are looking to tackle this job on their own. That's as far as we're gonna go, as I said, but we are going to actually raise this up a little bit while we are in here. That was the purpose of going ahead and disassembling this. I was just simply going to remove it just to show you guys what it looked like. But since we're having trouble with those end links right now, we're not going to be doing that. So we will slide the spreader bolt right back in here. Going ahead, get that started threading and then we will cinch it right up. Make sure it's nice and tight. Boom, 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 boom. All right, guys. So, I mean, literally though, as you guys see, those are the only bolts that it takes to get these out. It's a really simple job. Those people that think that you can't do it on your own, I promise you, you can. It's really not hard. You can get this done no problem whatsoever. Go ahead, crank that down. All right, and then the only thing left to do is put on our other two bolts. I mean, literally guys, it is only six bolts to do this job. It is, it's a little bit too easy in my opinion. I don't know, sorry to that nut, rest in peace. It uh, rolled away, I have to go grab that. Boom, 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 boom. There it is, it's a lot of threads. All right, you guys, so our suspension is fully back in. Let me hop up. Grab ourselves our spanner wrenches. All right, over here. You guys see all my cleaning supplies. <laughs> but, so with this, it's quite simple to adjust. We are going to be going up. So let me grab this mallet. These things are uh, very much so like tap into, tap to lock. Also tap to unlock, guys. I wouldn't recommend smacking that with your hand. I did before and uh, it busted up my hand. You live and you learn though. We're going to be cranking on this lower ring right here up into this one. And we're going to raise this about a quarter to a half inch. So we will judge based off this collar and the gapping to there. So I just rolled it all the way back down to where it's tight, but not, well, not tight, but closing that gap. So that way we can see that gap and judge based off of that. That looks about like the amount of height that I needed. Locked in. So that right there, guys, is how you adjust your coilovers. It's really quite simple. I wouldn't necessarily adjust your uh, preload on your springs unless you really know what you're doing or you have someone's help that knows what they're doing. I mean, if you really wanted, you could full send and just try some things out. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but that's what you want to do, go for it, guys. You know what I'm saying? Nonetheless, that is uh, all you have to do to adjust your coilovers. It's quite, quite simple, guys. You don't have to remove them or anything like that. It's, uh, it's all just right there, you know? You take off your wheel and you have access to everything. So I do have modified fender liners. As you guys can see, I have them up front blocking all my electronics. I don't necessarily have them in the back, but that's uh, to each their own. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I 
As you guys can see, it eaten away at my fender liner a decent bit already just because of the size tire that I was running. I was eating away on it whenever I was on my lowering springs. We went ahead, switched that out, or changed it up a little bit. Just trimmed it, adjusted it to where it covers our electronics and don't have it in any of the bull crap areas. We don't need it. So that being said, guys, um, we are going to go ahead and throw back on this wheel, hop over to the passenger rear side and show you guys how to do the rear coilovers. All right, guys, so here we are looking at the rears. So in the rear, obviously you will need to remove your fender liner, okay? This is quite simple. It's all the little T20 or T25, I think it's a T20. Just pull all these right out. That will be quick and easy. Then what you will need to do is you will have to remove one, two, and three. Those three bolts, one, two, three. Those three, and then there's two up here at the top of your strut. So you will remove all three of those, okay? You wanna work your way from the back to the front, and then you will remove your spring first, and then your strut, and whenever you go back to install, you will put in your spring first, and then this bolt, and then your strut, and then this bolt, and then this bolt. You need to work in that order, otherwise it will not fit in there, okay? Up here is just two simple bolts, as well as, you guys might be able to see this little drain tube right here, you have uh, whatever canister it is over here, okay? Over here, uh, don't know if you guys can see, but there is one screw right here, okay? If you remove that bolt, you can grab that canister, lift it up, and pull towards yourself. It'll come right out. It might feel like it's gonna break. It won't break, don't worry. You can pull that right out, and then that will give you access to these two screws up here, guys. That is all you have to do, is just get to these two screws, one, two, three, and four. So you have six screws on the rears, on this side, you have five screws on that side because that side does not have this uh, little thing behind here, all right? So that being said, I'm actually not going to completely remove these just for time's sake, guys, but I will be going ahead and adjusting these just a little bit to raise them up. Let's go on ahead and do that. To adjust the backs, you only obviously have this one lock collar and then you have two over here. I will just be adjusting my strut from max low, which is right there okay that's the maximum low right there we're going to raise a quarter inch so going ahead and start turning looks like we have hit our max right there that we're going to move for right now so going ahead and crank that back down this side literally needed to be adjusted a quarter inch to a hair i mean literally like nothing guys this side was barely scraping but it was scraping i think we've actually got it adjusted just enough to where we aren't gonna have to worry about this anymore. I was scraping on, I wanna say it was fender liner. It doesn't seem like I was scraping on body at all. Guys, that is it for the rear coilers. It's literally one, two, three bolts, two up front, and if you're on the passenger side, one more extra. It's quite simple. Um, once again, these are the standard BC series coiler, or BC BR series, no special variants or anything, no extreme low, no swift springs. And uh, this is how low they sit. I mean, you guys saw it was completely compressed before, and now it's not, but it, uh, it's probably not gonna be much higher. I just wanted to match that side. They were so close, but for some reason, this little tab was scraping on this side and not that one. So we moved it up an eighth an inch or so. Hopefully that's enough. Let's go in and get this wheel thrown back on, take it for a little drive, see how she feels, let you guys know. All right, guys, so we are out just doing a little test drive right now. Feels great. We did a little bit of adjustments. We will probably still have to raise that rear passenger side about another eighth of an inch just to stop it from scraping. But we are done scraping up front, and uh, that is awesome. So we are getting there, just continuing to dial these in. And uh, let me mention earlier, I know that in the beginning of this video, I said that I was going to be doing a full install on these coilovers. The reason I didn't do that, and I, it kind of slipped my mind in the intro, is that I've already had my alignment done, guys. I don't want to have to go out and get another alignment done. So we did not completely remove the coilovers, but we did go through and in depth show you guys which screws to use. So hopefully that was helpful for some of you guys that may be trying to attempt the coilover install on yourself or on your own. And uh, hopefully you guys find it helpful. But Nonetheless, right now we are going to just do a little bit of driving, you know, just testing out these coilovers. Everything feels good. We did soften up the front uh, down to the 25 uh, out of 
heavy on harden, hardening or damping or whatever, we toned it down some up front just to be able to try and get a little bit more grip up front, you know? But either way, I think it has done great. We, uh, as I said, we'll still have to adjust the rear just a little bit. But guys, these coilovers are awesome. And I know they're not the best coilovers out there on the market or anything like that. But if you're looking for something that's rather entry level, that still feels good and has the adjustable damping, finished our drive as you guys saw i threw in a little clip from it guys the coilovers feel great um we did soften up the dampening up front by five settings five clicks whatever it is just to try and improve our grip up front and in the rear guys we will still have to adjust that rear passenger side just a little bit more we're still scraping just a tad but guys it feels great i mean we uh we took some windy roads on the way out here it feels really good nice and tight all the way through no weird noises nothing like that so if you guys have been considering tackling this job and just haven't done it yet because you're not confident in yourself or in your skill guys go ahead and do it it's really really simple as i said it's only six bolts per side per wheel really so unless you guys decide to drop your axle which will add on an extra 12 boats and bolts in total which i don't think you guys will do after seeing what i've done you will be able to go on ahead and get these out no problem it will only take you probably an afternoon I'd say you could get the rears done in under 45 minutes for both sides, and then the fronts will probably take you about an hour each, just because it's a bit more technical. But either way, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, guys. We're only four subscribers away from 500. I can't believe it, but I hope that you guys continue to enjoy these videos, continue to subscribe, and continue to help grow this channel, guys. Our next goal is gonna be 1,000 subscribers, and I know that we can get there. So. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next week.